Good morning. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. We are diving into what I truly feel like is one of the most important chapters of this book. Now, all of it is important. We're going to talk about walking slow, but never going backwards. So if you're brand new and you're tuning into the page, we're going through Atomic Habits. And we've been going through a book for the last almost two months. The point of me going live about a book or even a podcast or getting your mindset right is to understand the power of mindset in anything that you're doing, but specifically here on the page. Like if you don't have this right, then guess what? You're going to grab the donut or you're going to go backwards or you're going to quit or you're going to fill in the blank, right? I truly believe after six years of hopping on this page and doing lives and talking to hundreds and hundreds of people all the time, it's the mindset that gets people frustrated. It is the, I don't believe I can do it, the negativity, not being around people that push them. It's lack of accountability. It's lack of purpose. It's here. And so I just realized it the spring. I was like, if people are truly not developing themselves, like self-development, it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you, I have been spoiled in the, it was the self-development. It was our CEO pushing me in a good, respectful way to, to get out of my comfort zone, to grow, to go, you know what? You should be reading every day. If your goal is to be a better you, you should be taking care of you, whether you're a mom or a dad, or you own a business or you're an employee or you're an athlete. I am shocked at the lack of self-development that people don't do. And in my head, I've been doing it for six years. And so I'm like, yeah, of course I read every day. Of course I listen to podcasts. I honestly am careful of who I surround myself with, 100%. And then I hear people going, I haven't read a book since high school. And I'm like, really? Really? And then I forget I've been so ingrained in this Uh, working on me, but working on my kids, sharing with other people that I forget that most business and companies and colleges and high school don't talk about getting your mindset right and waking up with a grateful heart and watching the words that you speak. There are things that our children need to be learning. If there's, science can be looked up, right? Like, man, I feel like I'm on a kick right now and I'm going to go over this chapter in a second. But like, I've never been more aware of the things that as adults, I wish we would have been taught in high school and what I need to be teaching my kids. Like most subjects can be learned. You can go Google something or ask Siri and she's going to tell you or ask Alexa and she'll tell you how many times the road, the sun rotates around the earth. Like who cares? But you want to know what matters is learning how to have self-control. You want to know what matters is learning how to handle your EQ, your emotions, and being adaptable in life circumstances and being able to have discipline in all areas of your life. You want to know what matters? Your words matter. The things that you're listening to and you're watching and you're reading matter. Those things are the things that we need to be teaching our kids. And as adults, you have to learn it so that you can be a positive influence and your children can watch you and do the same thing. So, With all of that, I don't know where it came from, except for the fact that this, that's why I do these lives, mainly because it holds me accountable to getting up and reading every single day. I love to help other people do that because if you're not going through the book, then you can follow me and I'll walk you through the book. This is what we're going through. And when we're done, we're going to go through a new book. We're on chapter 11. This is one of my favorite chapters. If you've never tuned in before, this is the best chapter to start with. I would encourage you to grab the book, but if not, go watch the other videos. I do them every day. Uh, If you're brand new, post new below. Where are you tuning in from? It feels like a Saturday to me, but I'm doing this on a Friday. If you watch next week, I don't know what day it is, but for right now, it's a Friday. Feels like the weekend already. So walk slow, not backwards. Incredible. So here's what I actually, I read the beginning of the chapter. He tells a story and there's a lot of science in the story. There's a lot of data in the book. I mean, sorry, there's a lot of science in the book. There's a lot of data and then there's stories and there's always an action step. And so in the beginning of this chapter, there was a a professor who was teaching a photography course and he split the class into two. And he said, here's how I'm going to grade you. All of you 
this, uh, let's say group A, all you're gonna do is I need you to submit one piece of art, that's it. And you're gonna be graded over the entire semester of this one piece of art, right? And then he, he had, let's say group B, you were gonna be graded on how many projects you create over the course of the semester. You have to have at least 100, right? So you've got one group who they have to have a really good project, only one, and you've got the other group who, who has to have at least 100 pieces of art. And I thought before I finished the paragraph that this group that only had to do one, I thought, oh, they're gonna actually, I bet you they do better. I didn't, I forgot, I have read this before and I, and I forgot. And then as you read it, this group, the group that had to create at least 100 pieces of art did the best. It wasn't the quality, it was the quantity that created the best outcome. And that's where we're gonna start. He talks about in the process of creating hundreds of photos, they, they honed in on skills. So he said what happened is, is the people that only had to do one project, they focused on perfection. They didn't learn new skills. They didn't fail and pick up and try again. They didn't figure out the real piece of art that they loved. They were so focused on perfection of one that they did not do very well. The group that focused on quantity did incredible, right? Because they had to try new things, they failed. They figured out new things, they, they had a different perspective and overall had better art. And here's where uh, I thought it was super, super powerful. So I've got almost a page to read to you, but I promise you, if you're not reading the book, you should listen. If you're reading the book, you'll go through this yourself. The quality group around spectating about, I'm sorry, didn't focus on perfection, right? In the end, oh, Annie, don't shake the table. You're fine. In the end, they had little to show for the effort of their unverified theories and one, so they just were mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. How do you say it? Mediocre? Annie. Mediocre. <laughs> You're fine. You're just shaking the table. My phone might fall over. She's coloring on the other side. Um, okay. It is easy to get bogged down by trying to find the optimal plan for change, the fastest way to lose weight loss, the best program to build muscle, the perfect idea for a side hustle. We are so focused on figuring out the best approach that we never get around to taking action. Action, it is the key. I coach my team in the business world. If you are learning from me on how to do things or social media or whatever it is, guess what? If you are not taking action, it doesn't matter. I talk about this on here all the time. If you're following me and every other keto person in the world and gathering recipes and all of the tips and tricks and your motive is there, but you don't take action, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so he says, um, the best enemy, wait, the best is the enemy of good. We love to say in our home, don't mess up good for perfect. Whether it's on business or relationships or trying this diet, right? Or working on, I, I just have to work out. Don't mess up good for perfect. Good, good is good. You're gonna fail if you're taking action. And the only way that you truly fail is if you quit. So you're not, a fail isn't if it didn't work out. The only way you fail is if you quit, right? If you quit, you failed. If you fail and you get back up, you learn a lesson and you keep going, right? He says, I refer to this as a difference between being in motion and taking action. So he talks about there's motion. All of you on here are taking, you're in motion, you're learning, right? You're enhancing your brain. You might be taking notes. You might be putting these little golden nuggets right here. You're in motion of learning something. Then the key is action. The two ideas sound similar, but they're not. When one is in motion, you're planning, you're strategizing, you're learning. So all of you are in motion right now. Those are all good, but they do not produce results. The only way you're gonna get fat loss, more muscle, make better choices, uh, move your body, have a better relationship with your kids. Anything that you want to accomplish is you have to take action on it. Not perfection, not perfect action. You have to do something, right? You can think about, I want to drink more water today. I'm going to plan to drink more water today. I'm going to even set up my water bottles around my house to drink more water today. But until you pick up that water bottle and drink it is the action that actually produces the result. Does this make sense? Man, I read this chapter and I was all fiery. That looks funny. I was all fiery today. And I was like, listen, this is the number one thing that people need to hear. 
Sometimes motion is useful, but it will never produce an outcome by itself. It doesn't matter how many times you talk to a personal trainer. The motion will never get you in shape. Only the action of working out will get you there. Does this make sense? Are you in motion or are you in action? There's so many flies, they're driving me crazy. Are you in motion or are you in action? That is the question I want, I want you to answer. In whatever your goals are, right? We talk about goals, we talk about systems, we talk about creating habits. Stay tuned, don't check out because he's gonna talk about the whole like, how long do I have to do something before I create a habit? For those of you who are reading The Miracle Morning or you did with us, your goal was 30 days of a consistent habit. I'm gonna tell you what he says in the book about the habit. So uh, the whole thing is so, so, so good. Talks about failing, talks about, okay. He says, you've got, you've got conversations going, uh, nope, that's not, okay. Motion makes you feel like you're going to get things done, right? I'm planning, I'm watching. Motion makes you feel like you're doing something. <gasps> I've got my calendar written out. I've got my menu planned. I'm writing all of my action steps. I take notes every day. And it makes you feel productive, doesn't it? But really, you're just preparing to get something done. When preparation becomes a form of procrastination, you need to change something. It does not, I don't want you to be merely planning. You have to practice. You have to put what you're learning into practice. If you want to master a habit, the key is to start with repetition, not perfection. You don't need to map out every feature of your new habit. You don't, you just need to practice. This is the first takeaway of the third law. You just need to get the reps in. That's it. I don't have to sit down and prepare of all the things I'm going to do all weekend and, and go look at the menu at the restaurant. I, I mean, you can, you can prepare if you know you're going out and you need to prepare to make the right choice, right? But if in the end you get to the restaurant and then you don't do it, what was the point? If you have some plans this weekend and you're like, oh, this is the restaurant we're going to. I looked at the menu. I've got goals. Here's what I'm going to eat. And you plan it all. And then you feel really good about yourself because you're like, I did it. I, I planned it. I'm going to do great this weekend. I've got serious goals. I've got habits and systems I'm creating. And then you get to the restaurant and you don't do it. What was the point? Right? Now, of course, there are times where you slip up. But it is the action that's going to get you to where you want to go. Okay. We're almost done, and I'm going to let you go. He has a whole bunch of science in here, a whole bunch of little graphs, talks about habit lines. This means that simply putting in your reps is one of the most crucial steps that you can take in encoding a new habit. You have to do it over and over and over again, and you might fail, and you do it again, and you might fail, and you might do it again. And again, the only way you fail is if you quit. So here's what he says at the very end. One of the most common questions is, how long does it take to build a new habit? If you read the Miracle Morning with us, he said, why don't you try doing the 30-day Miracle Morning Challenge with me? Doesn't mean it's going to be 100% a habit, but he's giving you action steps to do, right? Here's what it says in this book. And if you're just tuning in, this is the book we're going through. This chapter, we're chapter 11, super, super great. It's incredible. Uh, if you find value in this, I would love for you to press the share button. Sharing is caring, and so many other people just need an accountability or a place to tune into to learn. So I'd love for you to share. Uh, but what people really should be asking, here's the question. What people really should be asking themselves is, how many does it take for me to form a new habit? How many? That is, how many repetitions are required for me to make a habit automatic? He goes, sometimes you can't label a day. You can't say in 30 days, I'm going to have this habit created. In 12 days or 21 days or even 100 days, I'm going to have this habit created. It, sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes it's less than that. The point is the repetition of doing it every single day. What matters is the rate of which you perform the habit. How could you do something, how, how could you do something twice in 30 days or 200 times. It's the frequency that makes the difference. Your current habit, ha your current habits, what you're doing today, good or bad, have been internalized over the course of hundreds of times or thousands of repetitions, right? You don't have the habits you have today because of just two times. You've done them over and over and over again. New habits require the same level of frequency. You need to string together enough successful attempts until the behavior is firmly embedded in your mind and you can cross the habit line. 
You have to do it over and over again until you do it without thinking. What matters is that you take the action that you need to take to make progress, whether the action is fully automatic or less important. To build a habit, you need to practice it. And the most effective way to make practice happen is to adhere to the third law of behavior. Make it easy. The chat, and so then he just, he reviews. And he's going to go into, I mean, there's so much, so much. What do you need to do? Now, you've learned what to do, right? I will teach you on this page. I'll give you recipes. I will give you, I'll teach you about net carbs and total carbs and how to track your food and, and all of the things, right? The Miracle Morning actually maps that out for you. If you can own your morning for this first 60 hours of, 60 hours, for the first 60 minutes of your morning and you create a habit out of that, you're going to have success long-term because you're creating a system to own your day. What he's saying is stop getting in your head about perfection. Stop trying to make every, like your cupboards look perfect and your refrigerator look perfect and your timing is perfect. I can't do it because I've got a graduation or a party or a wedding. I'll start on Monday. Make one thing better. Take action on one thing. Drink more water. Get up five minutes early. Like do something, do something because the mere, like just thinking and planning is motion, but until you put it into action, it doesn't matter. And stop trying to say, we're going through this 30 days of the miracle morning and I'm going to be done with this in a second. You're on day 11. That's awesome. I don't want you to get to day 30 and go, it didn't work. You have to keep putting in the reps every single day. If your goal is to, is to truly, like if you have a goal, we talk about systems. The system is the repetition of doing it over and over again. Don't mess up good for perfect. Thank you for tuning in. I would highly recommend you grab the book and go through it, highlight it, internalize it, take action on it. And that's all I've got for you. So I love this chapter. It's my favorite chapter right now until we get to the next one. So I hope that made sense. I would love to know how are you doing? Do you, did that make sense? I'd love to have a little bit of input. And then um, if you ever have any questions, post your questions below and I'll come back and answer those later. Otherwise, I hope you have an incredible day and we'll talk to you soon.